This is Section 7.7, Approximation Integration. Our first and only objective is to use the trapezoidal rule to estimate integrals. And by the time we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain why the trapezoidal rule will be more accurate than LRAM or RRAM. First, I'd like to recall that when we first developed the concept of integral, it was within the context of finding areas beneath curves. And until we learned how to find the area exactly, we approximated it by using sums of rectangular areas. Now we can improve on this approximation by using sums of trapezoidal areas instead. Let's consider the plane region bounded by a continuous function f of x, the x-axis, and on the left and right by the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b. To approximate the integral, we're going to subdivide this interval from a to b into n subintervals. And we're going to remember that that delta x, or the width of each subinterval, is the length of the interval, which is b minus a, divided by n. Now, rather than using rectangles, we can build a more accurate approximation using trapezoids. If we look, we can see that. If we connect both the left and right, we get trapezoids. Notice that what is left over is significantly smaller than had we drawn rectangles. So here we have less error than had we drawn either a left or a right rectangle. We have significantly less error here. Here we have error that is the trapezoid is too big, here the trapezoid is too big, here the trapezoid is too big. So one thing I want you to think about is when is this trapezoid going to produce an area that is too small versus one that is too large. Hopefully you've noticed that the trapezoidal area will be an underestimate if f is concave down. Notice f is frowning here. And it'll be an overestimate, in other words, the trapezoid will be too large if the original function f is concave up. Next, I'd like you to recall that the area of a trapezoid is given by 1 half the height times the sum of the bases. And if we remember that these two bases have to be parallel, then we can see that the bases of any given trapezoid are going to come from function outputs. If we break this down one trapezoid at a time, we'll see that we have 1 half the height, which is a delta x. And then the first two bases for our first trapezoid will be f of 0 plus f of x sub 1. Our next trapezoid would be 1 half the height times the sum of its bases, which is going to use this f of x sub 1 again, and then f of x sub 2. If we move to our next trapezoid, we'll do 1 half that delta x times f of x sub 2 plus f of x sub 3. Now hopefully you will notice that as we move through this process, we're going to use each of these interior heights two times. It gets used once with the trapezoid on the left and again with the trapezoid on the right. The other thing I'd like you to notice is that we can collapse this into sigma notation and we can look at the pattern. Notice that in every trapezoid what is in common is this delta x over 2 and f's and x's. So if I collapse into a sigma we can get that the trapezoidal approximation will be that delta x over 2 times the sum of the two bases. And notice that our first subscript for x sub i came from this first edge. So that means our subscript is going to start at 0. And if we go to our last trapezoid here, the last left edge of that trapezoid is going to be when that i is an n minus 1. Now the interesting thing about this is now I can split this sum, just like I can split integrals. When the interior integrand involves addition, I can do the same thing with a sigma. So that means I can have one sigma that involves the f of x sub 1 here, and then distribute that delta x in. Same thing here, I can add these up separately and distribute the delta x in. And then I can put the 2 on the bottom. Now the reason I did this is because hopefully you recognize this sum as LRAM and this sum as RRAM. So it turns out that the trapezoidal rule is just the average of the LRAM and the RRAM. Back in our notes, we will write down that the trapezoidal area is an underestimate if f is concave down. 
and an overestimate if f is concave up. Now we've already worked through a bit of this where we will compute the areas of each trapezoid individually and then add them. And I want to point out that this is the only method that will work when the height of each trapezoid is not the same. So this will be appropriate when you have tables of data that are not equally spaced. But when the height of every trapezoid is the same, we can factor out that delta x over 2 and write it in sigma notation like we did on the slides and end up here. Or we can distribute the sigma and see that it's the average of LRAM and RRAM. Or the third and final thing we could do is we can simply add the bases without the sigma notation and notice that every interior base ends up being doubled. So we'll have that delta x over 2 times the first base, 2 of the interior, 2 of the interior, 2 of the interior. We use 2 of all of those interior bases and then use the end bases just one time. With example 1 now, we're going to use the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4 to estimate the integral from 1 to 2 on the graph of x squared. So I took the liberty of drawing the picture ahead of time. So we've got this x squared parabola and we are accumulating from 1 until 2 and chopping into 4 slices. So if I want to use the trapezoidal rule, we will have delta x. We need to compute that first. That will be our b minus our a divided by n and we end up with 1 fourth. So our job now is to estimate by adding up the trapezoids. So we could do that multiple ways. We could do them one at a time where we would have that one half times our delta x times the sum of our bases. So that would be our first base which is a one plugged in plus our second base which is a one and a fourth or five fourths plugged in and then we can add our next trapezoid, one-half times one-fourth times the sum of those bases. So that's f of five-fourths plus f of six-fourths. Then add our next trapezoid, which will be f of three-halves plus f of seven-fourths. And then our final trapezoid of one-half its height times the sum of its bases, which will be f of seven-fourths plus f of Two. Now notice that we could compute each of those separately and add them up and we'd end up with our trapezoidal approximation. You will also notice that I have this one half and the one fourth in common so I could have pulled those out in front and then combined all of these together. That would give me one of the f of ones and two of the f of five fourths and two of the f of three halves and two of the f of seven fourths and only one of the f of twos. So again we could add that up on our calculator and get the same thing. So let's pull out our calculators and compute these separately and come back. You'll notice here on my calculator I put in x squared for my y editor and then on the home screen I entered this one half times one fourth times y one of one plus two y ones of five fourths plus two y ones of three halves plus two y ones of seven fourths plus a y one of two and I put that all together to get 75 30 seconds. Now the other option was to compute each of these individually which I also did to get these values. You'll find that if you have a calculator and those delta x's are the same for every subinterval it might be quicker to just type this one in. If we read example 2, we are given information about an outside temperature function and rather than being given that temperature function analytically, we're just given a table of data for it and then we're asked what is the average temperature for the 12 hour period. So first we're going to notice that we see this word average and in calculus, since we've done section 6-5, that word average means we will write 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b. And because we are looking at the first 12 hour period, we know that our b is 12 and our a is 0. So we will have the average and then inside that integral goes the function that we want the average of. So that is our temperature function. Now since we cannot answer the question what did I take the derivative of with respect to time that gave me that temperature, I can't do this analytically by going with an antiderivative. So instead I'm going to have to estimate 
what that accumulation is, which is why we're in this section. In order to estimate that accumulation, we are going to do the trapezoidal rule. So instead of doing antiderivatives, we'll do 1 half the delta x. So we look to see if delta x is the same, and it is for every single subinterval. So that means I can pull these out and then look at the overall sum. So inside, we will have our first height, which is 63. And then we'll have two of all of our interior heights. And we will continue using two of each of those interiors, because they get shared by two trapezoids. And we continue using two until we get to the last one. And the last one is simply used one time. So now we get out our calculators and plug that all in. We get approximately 65.167, which makes sense because the average temperature should be somewhere in the range of these temperature values. With example 3, we are given a table of values. And what is different about this one is that if we look to see the delta x, we can see that it is not consistently the same with every subinterval. Here, our distance is only a 1, whereas here it's a 3, here it's a 4, and here it's a 2. So because that delta x is not the same, the only way that we can estimate using the trapezoidal rule is to do one trapezoid at a time. So it's sometimes easier to plot these points so that we're actually looking at the trapezoids. And we can see that that integral from 0 to 10 of the function is going to be approximated by the first trapezoid, which is 1 half times its height, which is 1, times the sum of its bases, which are 10 and 12. Our next trapezoid will be 1 half times its height, which is 3, times the sum of its bases, which are 12 and 15. Our third trapezoid will be 1 half of its base, which is 4, which we can see in our picture here, excuse me, its height, and then the sum of its bases, which are 15 and 14 plus 1 half times the height of the final trapezoid, which is 2, times the sum of its bases, which are 20. Put that all together on your calculator, and you end up with 129.5. Now, the techniques we've used so far work great as long as the number of trapezoids is relatively small. But just like when we computed the RAM, MRAM, or LRAM when n was large, it was good to know how to utilize the built-in sigma feature of our calculators to help us. Fortunately, since the trapezoidal sum is simply the average of the LRAM and the RAM, we can just use our old techniques now to find a trapezoidal sum when n is really big. So the first thing we'll do is we'll enter the function that we're accumulating into y1, then we'll compute our delta x, and then we'll enter 1 half times the LRAM plus the RRAM using our calculators. We know from past experience that in order to enter these into the calculator, we need to know what our A is, we need to know what our delta X is, and we need to know what our N is. So we're going to write those down first. We can see that our A is our lower limit, so that's going to be pi. We can see that delta X is going to be our b minus our a, which is a 2 pi minus a pi over our n, which is 30. So we get a pi over 30 for our delta x. We can see that our n, in this case, is 30. To help you get this into your calculator, I'm going to write down what, we're, what we'll actually type in. Instead of having the generalized format here, we'll write it down for here. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to put that y1 of x into our calculator. So that'll be the sine of x quantity squared. So we'll put that in y1, and then on the home screen, we're going to do 1 half times, and we're going to open a parenthesis so that we can add LRAM and RRAM. LRAM requires a sigma and sigma commands require a parenthesis. Now inside that sigma, we will put y1 of our a plus our i times our delta x. We'll close y1, and then we'll multiply by that delta x again. So now inside the sigma, we have a closed y1 times a delta x. So we have a height 
times that delta x, and then we're going to tell it what that i will go from. It will go from 0 to our n, which was 30, minus 1 is 29. Notice that we've closed this sigma now, and we're ready to add the next one, which is our r ram. r ram looks, looks exactly the same. It just changes what i starts and stops at. In this case, with r ram, we'll start with a 1, and n with n, which in this case was 30. So now we've closed the sigma. We need to close what is being multiplied by the 1 half. So let's get our calculators out and type that in. First, we'll go to y1, and we'll enter in our sine of x squared. Next, on the home screen, we will enter in 1 half times that LRAM, which is the sigma of y1 of pi plus i times pi over 30. Then we'll multiply that by pi over 30. So we've got heights times widths. And then we tell it that i starts at 0 and goes to 29. Then we'll add our RAM, which is the exact same thing, except we now start with an i. Oops. that begins at 1 and goes to 30. So hit diamond enter and we end up with 1.570 or 1.571 depending on whether you truncate or round. And we're done.